All right, hey guys, Dr. Josh Axe here. Today we're gonna to talk about healing your gut using diet, essential oils, herbs. I'm actually really excited to talk about the herb part today. I'm gonna to share with you some herbs that might surprise you and all of this more on Facebook Live today. So hey, would love to give you guys a shout out. Let me know the city you're from, the state you're from, the country you're from, and I'll give you a shout out right now on Facebook Live. Also, help me spread the word, food is medicine. You know, there are millions of people today struggling with gut issues. We know that all disease begins in the gut. So actually, whether you're struggling with gut issues such as inflammatory bowel disease or gas or bloating or leaky gut, those, those are all gut-related symptoms. But also, you know, gut issues can cause autoimmune disease, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, brain issues, migraine headaches, behavioral issues, especially in kids with things like ADHD. All kinds of problems start in the gut and so today we're gonna to be talking about exactly how to heal your gut and actually how to do it very, very quickly. And a lot of this is information you've probably never heard before because a lot of it's based on traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, which most people don't practice today. So we're gonna talk about all of this and a whole lot more today on the show. I'm actually gonna grab my computer there so I can give you a shout out. Be back in about two seconds. All right, here we go. So um, I'm going to see where you guys are joining me from. Again, let me know the city you're from, the state you're from, the country you're from. I just got done. I actually just got back from New York and L.A. Uh, here this week. Had some, uh, spoke at a couple amazing conferences out there and uh, excited to be back though at my home here in Nashville. And excited to connect with you guys here on Facebook Live uh, as well. All right. So let's go ahead and there we go. See where everybody is joining me from. All right, here we go. All right, we've got Richard Sullivan from South Africa. Hey, Richard, thanks for joining me here today. We have Teresa from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Hey, Teresa. We got Norma watching from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We have Helena or Helen Browning watching from Australia. We've got Travis from Seattle. Hey, Travis, thanks for joining me here today. Patricia Kingery. Hey, Patricia, I hope you and the girls and the family are well. Uh, from Troy, Ohio, I knew Patricia growing up. Uh, and um, uh, let's see here, we've got Michelle from Quebec, Canada. Jeff says, what's up? Um, a lot's up, I've been uh, busy. I just got back from LA last night, did a great conference out there, and I was in New York a few days before. Uh, a lot of fun stuff. Also, someone from Scotland here. Uh, Edmonton, Canada, for, uh, Chris from Edmonton, all over the world. Uh, hey guys, thanks for joining me here today. All right, so today we're talking about how to heal your gut. And I'm gonna talk about the food you gotta remove, the diet you gotta follow, the herbs, the supplements. Actually, certain emotions affect your digestive health, your gut, and also get into essential oils here today as well. So we're gonna talk about all this. Let's first talk about what you need to remove from your diet if you wanna heal your gut. Actually, let me start off saying this as well. With your gut, in order for it to heal, it needs to get in a different environment. So remember that term environment, because a lot of us have what's called dampness in our guts. Now think about this, mold, fungus, parasites, mold specifically grows, grows in damp basements, right? If there's flooding in a home or a basement, that's what causes mold to grow. Think about your gut and body the same way. The reason why most of you have gut issues is because it may not be mold, but it's a, it's, it's a relative of mold. It's called yeast or candida is actually growing in your gut, in your digestive system, which actually causes nutrient malabsorption. And candida produces toxins, which eats a hole in your gut lining, causing something called leaky gut syndrome. So the whole key to healing your gut is changing the environment. And so listen, this might surprise you. There are foods that you might think of as healthy, but they actually aren't going to help heal your gut because of the environment your gut's in, okay? And so again, let me give you an example. You might think almond butter or, you know, or eggs or even avocados are good for your gut. For some people they are, but if you've got a lot of dampness, those might, might not be the best sources of fat for you because they're slightly dampening where other foods like bitter foods dry up all dampness. We got almost no bitter foods today in our diet. So today I'm gonna to share with you, I see a lot of medical and natural practitioners who basically if they wanna help you with your gut health or candida, they just say, get off sugar and eat fermented foods. That's good, but it's not enough because even if you eat fermented foods which are sour and you get rid of the sugar, 
you still haven't changed the environment which is drying up dampness to completely heal. So maybe you're a person watching this and you followed some of the things I've talked about or other practitioners and you got maybe 50% better, but you never got all the way better. That's what today's video is for, is me getting into how to break through that plateau and actually heal your body, starting with your gut here today. So here's the first thing. We gotta get rid of foods that cause dampness. The most dampening foods out there, number one is sugar and refined grains, especially wheat. Now, you may not know this, but wheat, Okay, so there's lots of different grains, right? There's wheat, wheat, there's oats, there's corn, there's barley, there's rye. Wheat is the most dampening of all grains. So wheat, if you have gut issues, is the worst grain you could ever consume. So do you guys hear me on that? Wheat, as in whole wheat bread, whole wheat grain, is the worst grain you can consume if you have gut health. And it's not just because the gluten, it's because it's a dampening grain versus barley, is more drying, corn is more drying, oats and rice, those are more neutral, so those don't affect you as bad, but wheat is very dampening, and wheat is the, wheat and white flour products, and white flour products are often taken from wheat, they are the most dampening, terrible food for your gut and digestive health on the entire planet. So that's step number one, get rid of the white and the wheat foods out of your diet in terms of grains, and also I'd get rid of most grains in general, um, if you're gonna heal your gut, okay? Now again, if you aren't gonna consume grains, the easiest grain to digest is rice. And not just any rice, it's rice that's been cooked for a long time in your slow cooker or crock pot where you cook it overnight. In Chinese medicine, it's called kanji, C-O-N-G-E-E. -E. What they did is they would take rice and chicken broth or water and they would cook that overnight and they would make it to where it's almost like goopy, right? It's just very soft, well, well cooked, and that's what people would eat to help nourish themselves back to health. So if you are gonna consume a grain, rice that's long cooked, a sprouted rice in a crock pot's the easiest to digest. Um, the other thing is sugar, okay? Sugar, of course, is very dampening, all types of sugar. Hydrogenated oils, right? Now here's the other thing that might surprise you. Even those potato chips you might like, you know? A lot of those oils are fried. So let's say you buy healthy chips. If they have sunflower oil and safflower oil, most of the time those oils are hydrogenated, so that's really gonna cause some gut issues. So you wanna stay away from potato chips and those chips that are using sunflower and safflower oil. And then actually egg whites, okay? Now listen. Those aren't super dampening, they lightly are. So if you have an egg here or there like once a week, that's probably fine. But for a lot of you, egg yolks are actually easier to digest than the white, and the egg white is what's dampening to the body. And then of course, dairy. Of all the foods I listed here, the most three most dampening are that you should never consume if you have a candida, yeast overgrowth, or gut issues, wheat and white flour products, sugar, and dairy products. Those are the worst for your gut and digestive system. Now, grass-fed organic kefir from goat's milk, some people tolerate that well, okay? But even then, you should consume that with a lot of bitter foods because it's still slightly dampening. But again, you wanna get rid of all of these if you wanna heal your gut, okay? Step number one, remove those. By the way, if you're enjoying this live broadcast right now and you're like, man, this is, hey, this is good stuff, take a minute right now, punch the share button right now, help me spread the word that food is medicine or it's poison, right? As Ann Wigmore said, food can be your greatest source of medicine or your greatest form of poison. Is what you're eating, is it poison or is it medicine for your body, okay? And for a lot of people, these things here, they're poison to your body. They're toxic to your body. And by the way, thanks everybody who's sharing this right now. I see all the shares. Thanks for everybody clicking the love button here as well and sharing this info. And hey, let me, if you guys have uh, questions, I, I see one question here from Rose. She says, organic can be expensive. What if I can't buy everything organically? Here's what's most important to buy organic. Your meat and dairy products, okay? The other things aren't as important. Meat and dairy, try and buy organic. The others, if you don't have the finances, that's okay, don't worry about it, okay? So it's a good, uh, good question there. What about freshly ground grains? Makes no difference. If they're fresh, if they're not fresh, doesn't matter with grains, they're all dampening. Uh, wheat is dampening, where rice, 
uh, isn't dampening. So rice is going to be better than wheat for almost everybody with gut issues. Uh, Jared asked, what about brain fog? Listen, brain fog absolutely is caused by a condition called leaky gut syndrome. It's when your gut lining gets so damaged that proteins like casein and gluten start leaking through your gut and your bloodstream, they recirculate, and then they start affecting the brain. It's actually similar to what happens with a child with autism. When a child with autism, if they have, you know, typically their gut becomes compromised, they get leaky gut. So anytime children with, on the autistic spectrum disorders eat gluten or casein or uh, food additives and chemicals and food colorings, it recirculates because it goes through their gut, gets in their bloodstream, and then it affects the brain. So almost every child, I, I shouldn't say every, yeah, every child I've ever worked with on, that has an autistic spectrum disorder, they have some type of gut gut issue or leaky gut, which then is affecting, it's that gut brain connection that's really affecting them in a big way. All right, so these are the foods you got to remove. This is the poison. Let's talk about the natural medicine and diet that's amazing for gut health. And part of what you need to do if you're going to heal your gut is you got to heal and seal your gut lining. Remember, your gut lining is kind of like, imagine I had a strainer here for pasta, right? They've got little holes in it. Well, imagine I start taking a knife and like putting holes in the strainer. So now things are just falling through that should never fall through. That's what leaky gut is. So we got to repair and heal. You want to know what your gut lining is made up of? Your entire gut lining, the barrier between your gut and your bloodstream, it's made of collagen. Do you guys hear what I said? Your gut lining is made of collagen. So if you're going to heal your gut, what do you have to be giving your body to repair it? Collagen or the building blocks of collagen, which are the amino acids, proline, hydroxyproline, and glycine. That's what repairs the gut lining and other collagen boosting nutrients found in bone broth like glucosamine, chondroitin, hyaluronic acid, those also help repair the gut lining. That's an absolute what you need in your diet if you want to heal and seal that gut lining. That's a really, really big deal. All right, you got to remove these. So here's what I'm calling this diet. And by the way, I put this diet in my new book and it's called the collagen keto diet or the keto collagen diet, but you gotta have collagen, you gotta remove the sugar and get rid of the dampness. That's how you heal gut conditions. And so again, we need that collagen because it's what our gut is made up of. So let's dive in and talk about these key foods on a collagen keto diet. Number one, you knew this was coming, bone broth, right? Specifically chicken broth, is the most beneficial for your gut. So remember that. Now, let me ask you this question. When you were sick as a kid, did your mom ever give you chicken soup? Now, why didn't your parents ever give you beef soup when you were sick as a kid? That's because the ancient Chinese medicine and ancient Greek recipe to heal your gut or boost your immune system was chicken soup. Why? Because chicken soup has something beef doesn't. It has type two collagen and it has chondroitin, glucosamine and hyaluronic acid. Those are all the nutrients you need to repair and heal your gut lining. Remember this, where's your immune system live? 70% of your immune system lives in your gut. So if you want to boost your immune system, you got to heal your gut. So that's why again, chicken soup or chicken broth is more beneficial than beef broth or fish broth or any type of broth when it comes to healing your gut and boosting your immune system. So again, bone broth, but not any bone broth, chicken broth, and, chi and chicken broth is actually what makes up uh, the products out there that are typically like bone broth protein. If you ever heard or taken bone broth protein, that's made of chicken broth most of the time. And so that is amazing there. Or just drinking chicken broth itself, making it at home is great. Organic wild meat products, um, wild caught fish like salmon, very great for the digestive system. Those omega-3 fats, Great for your gut. Um, coconut. Now, coconut is great because coconut has antimicrobial properties. Uh, the fats found in coconut, like lauric acid, capric acid, capricilic acid, are all great. So the best fat you can consume with gut issues is going to come from coconuts, followed by flax seeds and chia seeds. Flax seeds and chia seeds have a unique type of fiber called soluble fiber or mucilaginous fiber, which actually helps with bowel movements. It helps give the right type of fiber to feed probiotics in your gut. So these are key. Flax and chia are great for the gut health. Now, chia, let me say this. You want to consume these ground. 
Consuming whole chia seeds for some people is hard on their gut. So you want to consume like flax seeds that are ground up or chia that's ground. It's easier for those with gut issues. You want to get those that way. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this live broadcast, hey, help punch the share button, click the love button, help me spread the word. And by the way, if you want to know all of this stuff I'm talking about today in detail as well, I have a chapter in my new book, Keto Diet. It's called The Keto Collagen Diet that goes through the diet to actually help heal your gut. So I want to show you here. Here we go, chapter 14 in the book. This is the Keto Collagen Plan. You see that? Chapter 14, Keto Collagen Plan. And this is in this new book. And by the way, this book now is being sold nationwide, Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com. And um, listen, right now, Barnes & Noble this week, it's 20% off. And Amazon has it at $12 off. So buy it this week before they jack the price up. This book is on sale, 80 recipes, uh, the ultimate book on keto diet. But specifically, if you have a gut issue, make sure to read chapter 14. I have a 14-day plan of what to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, every supplement to take, all part in this book. So pick it up at your local bookstore or online on Barnes & Noble or Amazon.com. Huge sale at both Barnes & Noble and Amazon right now. All right. Here's the other things, right? Blueberries. Did you know blueberries contain unique antioxidants that help heal the gut? Blueberries contain anthocyanins, flavonoids, and resveratrol. Now, resveratrol, most people think about with red wine, okay? But resveratrol is not only found in red wine, it's also found in the skin of blueberries. So of all fruits out there, blueberries are probably the most healing fruit for your gut, okay? Blueberries are an incredible superfood for so many reasons, but if you have gut issues and want to heal your gut, blueberries, my number one fruit for healing your gut. Now, olives are also great, right? Olives and olive oil are a good oil to consume on this collagen keto diet, right? The other big thing is get rid of sugar and all grains. If you're going to consume grains, a little bit of sprouted rice in the crock pot. That's the best grain to consume when going keto. And then bitter foods. Remember I said this earlier? Remember this. Sweet foods and foods that are, uh, well, for the most part, sweet foods, those cause dampness in the body. Whereas bitter foods dry up the dampness and they kill candida. Listen, I'm telling you, if you have, have had candida, stick out your tongue. If you ever have a white coating on your tongue, especially after a meal, you'll, that's candida. You have candida in your body and it's actually causing your body to not be able to absorb nutrients. In fact, if you've got low energy, it's probably because you have candida in your body and your body can't absorb vitamin B12. So now your energy is low. Or, or you can't absorb iron or zinc, which is now affecting your immune system or causing you to get acne on your skin. All of these are related to gut issues. One of the greatest ways to heal your gut is to consume bitter foods. Here are some bitter foods, or you can always look up Dr. Axe Bitter Foods. I, have a, I believe I have a list I've written about an article before. But you know, bitter foods are things like radishes, radicchio, arugula. Arugula is a very bitter herb. Romaine lettuce is bitter. Broccoli rave, known as rapini, is bitter. All herbs and spices. Now, that's the biggest thing we're missing in our diet today is herbs and spices. If you eat basil straight, rosemary straight, cinnamon straight, oregano, those are very bitter. We need more herbs and spices. That bitterness or bitter foods help heal our gut. Black cumin. Cumin is very bitter. We've got to be getting the bitter stuff in our diet. If you ever eat beef liver or chicken liver, super bitter. That's why it helps kill candida. And then here's another key to healing, to supporting your gut, eating, eating foods that are high in vitamin C. Not as much oranges and, 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 and citrus. It's more um, like, well, lemons and limes. It's uh, exotic berries like amla berry, camu camu, acerola cherry. You can buy these, like, these uh, antioxidant berry powders and just put them in water and drink those down. But those will help with collagen production and conversion in your body. But the big thing is bone broth, wild organic meat, steamed vegetables, steamed vegetables or baked vegetables and coconut oil or are probably the easiest for you to digest. Um, you can do also, a great thing to do is steam vegetables and have those with tahini. Tahini is a bitter, um, 
Uh, tahini is like a, a bitter, uh, lightly bitter, but it's a great dressing. If you do tahini with some sea salt on steamed vegetables, it actually almost tastes like a cheese. It's very, very rich and fulfilling. And then again, blueberries, olives, bitter foods, but these are the most healing foods. But again, in my book here, if you wanna know the complete list and the foods to follow, I have all of that in my new book here, Keto Diet. Huge sale, biggest sale, 20% off at Barnes & Noble right now. So you can go to your local Barnes & Noble, local bookstore, amazon.com, check it out there as well. Just came out this week and has this collagen keto diet for healing your gut or leaky gut syndrome, which then affects, helps heal your brain, your hormones, all these different areas. All right, let's talk about the herbs and spices. I guarantee you some of the ones like, I'm gonna talk about matcha trifala, you've probably never heard of that. I'm gonna talk about how these specific herbs can help heal your gut and your entire body. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to say this. There are millions of people today who are struggling with inflammatory bowel disease, gas and bloating, candida, chronic digestive issues, diverticulitis, and they don't know there's a natural way to heal. A lot of them are getting put on antibiotic drugs by their medical practitioners, which is actually doing them more damage, causing them to develop autoimmune disease. That's what happens, you know that? When somebody has gut issues and they keep taking antibiotics over time, they weaken their immune system to where they now have a higher risk of getting an autoimmune disease. So help me teach people how to use food as medicine. Take a minute, hey, just press the share button, share this to the people you know, click the love button, or maybe text somebody and let them know, hey, you gotta jump on and watch this right now because I wish my mom, I wish myself, I wish I would have known this stuff a long time ago and uh, I wish everybody knew this. All right. Thanks everybody, I see a lot of you sharing this, thanks so much. If you guys have questions too, feel free to ask your questions. By the way, if I miss something, what are the foods you guys think, anything I didn't put up here that you believe damages your gut? What foods, I know you guys are really knowledgeable, and also, what are some foods that you believe are gut healing foods that I didn't put on this list? Hey, I'd love to hear from you guys what, uh, what, what you guys are putting down here. All right, let's talk about now about the herbs and spices that help heal our guts. Number one, actually this one might surprise you, matcha green tea can be good. Matcha green tea supports collagen production and acts as an antioxidant to protect your body. So matcha can have a lot of benefits. Actually, great comment here from Don Morgan. She says, aloe vera. Now, here's what aloe vera is good for some people and not for everybody. Aloe vera is good for people that are damp, but that have heat in their body, a lot of heat. So aloe vera is good in the summer for people. But if somebody has, or if somebody has IBS with constipation, aloe vera is good. But if somebody has IBS or diarrhea and loose stools, they don't want to consume aloe. So did you guys hear that? If somebody has loose stool and diarrhea, they don't want to consume aloe. But if somebody has chronic constipation and it's in the summer and they're really hot, they want to do aloe, okay? Um, I know that's a little complex, but those, there's two groups of people with digestive issues. One group wants to do aloe, the other group doesn't. The group that has constipation can, the group that has loose stools and diarrhea should not do aloe, but yes, it could be healing. Somebody said ericacea, another person said manuka honey. You're right, manuka honey and these sort of honeys can be good for the gut for those people as well. Great stuff, guys. Um, love it, great comments. Um, uh, Maria says, is all of this in your book? Loads of this is in my book. Most of what I'm covering here, a lot of it is in the book. Uh, so yeah, you can check out Keto Diet here and a lot of everything I'm covering is in my new book, Keto Diet. Great question. All right, so let's talk about herbs here. Matcha, astragalus, ginger, so matcha. Now here's a big one, astragalus. If you're a person especially that has loose stools or candida, loose stools and candida, one of the other, you gotta take astragalus. Astragalus is an amazing herb. This is probably one of the, this is one of the top 10 herbs used in traditional Chinese medicine to heal the gut. It was called a spleen deficiency, but it's a weak digestive tract. And so astragalus is great. Also, astragalus is great for people with autoimmune disease. Very good herb, acts as an adaptogen for your, for, for your, for your gut. Um, ginger, of course. Now, a lot of people that have digestive issues, they're damp, but they're also slightly cold. We gotta warm the body up, okay? Ginger is amazing. It has all of these anti-inflammatory compounds. Ginger, and you can take ginger anyway. You can take it as a tea, in capsule form, as an essential oil, or a CO2 extract, but make sure to get your ginger trifala. Now this is part of, now these other herbs I mentioned, 
These are more part of Asian uh, and Chinese medicine. Triphala was a key component of Ayurvedic medicine. Now it's a three berry blend that's known to tonify and strengthen and calm your digestive tract. So Triphala, be looking for this. This is great, especially if a probiotic has this. Triphala is good for pretty much everyone's gut and digestive system uh, and for their skin. But Triphala is an amazing uh, berry blend for the gut and it's found in certain types of you know ancient uh, probiotics that were created from sort of like ancient uh, you know, ancient formulas, okay? But look for Trifala, especially in probiotics, great for the gut. And then of course, CBD and CBD oil, right? Now, I'm gonna explain to you right now why CBD is so beneficial. By the way, thanks to everybody who's on mission with me, sharing this right now, giving the love, because I wanna explain why CBD is so incredible for the gut and for healing your gut. CBD calms your sympathetic nerve system. A lot of us live in this sympathetic response where we're stressed all the time. Did you know, and I can tell you this, and if you're a person with a gut issue or have ever had a health issue, you'll know what I'm talking about. I've had patients who had high emotional stress and it caused them to have major digestive issues just as bad as if they would have eaten ice cream or consumed gluten. It makes it that much worse. Have you ever had a health issue and you're like, gosh, I've been eating so great and yet I'm still having this health problem. You know why that is? It's because stress. The, st the emotional stress we're experiencing. The number one supplement you can take to lower stress is CBD. Now, I'm not saying CBD is a cure-all. I'm not saying it's better than any other herb. I, I kind of put it up there with turmeric, right? Turmeric's really powerful. CBD is really powerful. But for people that need to lower stress hormones like cortisol, have adrenal issues, have gut issues, neurological issues, need better sleep at night, CBD, especially, and by the way, when you're buying CBD, it should always be certified organic because CBD can, uh, hemp is sprayed a lot with a lot of pesticides. But CBD, amazing for your gut health because of how it reduces those stress hormones that affect your digestive system. All right, so next thing up, I wanna talk about the supplements here, okay? So supplements, the best supplements you wanna be taking if you've got gut issues, okay? Number one is a probiotic. Look for an SBO probiotic. In fact, if you wanna you know, search for things online, you can always do a Google search for you know, probiotics like Dr. Axe. I've written articles on the past about probiotics, so you can search Dr. Axe probiotics. I've written articles in the past on this type of thing. Look up SBO probiotics. And then look at probiotics that have been created from ancient formulations, okay, using Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine. When you're buying a probiotic, it's especially great if it has herbs like Trifala in it. Remember I mentioned this, Trifala? Look for a probiotic supplement that has Trifala and other Ayurvedic herbs. Really, herbs uh, act as prebiotics for probiotics and actually help with the dampness, right? They help the because herbs are bitter, those bitter herbs get rid of dampness, which allows probiotics to grow better, gives them room to grow. Kind of like fertilizer. Think of these Ayurvedic herbs as fertilizer for the soil in your gut for probiotic growth. This is a lot of people are missing their probiotics. So probiotics, collagen, always look for a multi-collagen protein. Anytime you're buying collagen, you want multiple strains, especially type two collagen, it's the most beneficial for the gut. And then something like a bone broth protein. Now, bone broth protein is a supplement. The reason why it's so good is it has collagen, but it also has glucosamine, chondroitin, hyaluronic acid, all of these, they're called collagen boosters, which are great for the gut. But again, probiotics, collagen, those are two really important. And then digestive bitters can be great for the gut. Remember what I said, digestive bitters. You can buy these in tincture forms at your local health food store. Um, and you can always just say, hey, Dr. Axe told me to come in and buy digestive bitters. Um, and and they'll, they'll show you the right digestive bitters to get and write other products there too. Like Vitamin Shop, Whole Foods Market, Sprouts Market, um, Fresh Time, like, or just your local health food store. It's always great to get out and support your local health food store. They got some really knowledgeable people and they're going there and say, hey, is there a probiotic with Trifal or an SBO probiotic? Ask for these types of things. All right. What do we got next here? Okay, next thing here I wanna talk about is emotions, okay? And then we're gonna talk about essential oils here to finish up. And thanks for everybody who shared this. I'm gonna see the comments here as well. Um, all right. Uh, 
Somebody says, Deb says, CBD is awesome, totally agree with you. Are they the same as enzymes? Probiotics are not the same as enzymes, actually. They are very different. Enzymes help break things down. Probiotics do too, to a degree. I think probiotics are the most important thing, even more important than enzymes. Lo lots and lots of probiotics. Uh, and then bitter foods, that'll help with digestion too. A lot of those bitter foods, I think is critical there as well. All right, let's talk about the emotions, okay? So I'm gonna show you this. Emotions of fear, worry, grief, anger, and anxiety all affect your digestive health, okay? I want you to pinpoint for yourself right now of all these emotions I just said, fear, worry, grief, anger, anxiety, which emotion do you experience when you come into conflict or most on a regular basis, okay? Each one of these emotions affects a different organ system. Fear affects your adrenals, kidneys, and reproductive organs. Worry affects your stomach and pancreas. Grief affects your lungs and your colon. And anger affects your liver and gallbladder, so that'll affect a fat digestion. Anxiety, that affects your small intestine, which is where leaky gut takes place. So all of these different emotions affect a different area or a different type, a different area of your digestive system, okay? So if you're going to get rid of these, you need to start focusing on these positive emotions of being courageous, having joy, peace, love, gratitude, and purpose. So I want you to write these down right now. Write these down. Write these down to the negative ones. Write down the positive ones. Figure out how to combat these. My mom struggled with major gut and digestive issues and cancer. She beat cancer naturally and gut issues. She was struggling with fear and worry. Those were her two big emotions she was struggling with. Struggling with. A little bit of grief as well, okay? And we, she actually, you know, listen, everybody's different religious beliefs. My mom wrote down uh, Bible verses and started saying those every day. And then she just started telling God everything she was grateful for. And then she started scheduling in time for joy. So like, you know, watching funny movies and going out, you know, having a good time with friends. She scheduled those things in. And then she started having a purpose. She was going to help teach others about health and do certain things like mentor other people. So again, if you're not feeling fulfilled right now or you have emotions that are really negative, focus on implementing these things into your life. And I'm telling you, your digestive health will get much, much better. And you will also get better your entire life. Your health, your life, your gut health, they'll all get better if you can focus on these positive emotions. By the way, if, you, if you're with me on that, that you know that emotions play a big, big deal in our health right now. Give me a thumbs up or share this or or put, you know, raise a hand or a thumbs up here on Facebook Live. I'd love to say or say amen or whatever you want. But um, again, I'm telling you right now, in years and years of practice, and I've cared for thousands and thousands of patients over the years and people, emotions will affect your health and your gut health just as much or more than all of this food stuff. Now, you got to do this stuff too, but I'm telling you, that's the other half you got to take care of. Last but not least, let's talk about essential oils. Essential oils, here's the three most beneficial. Now there's lots that benefit your, um, your digestive health, but I really believe that ginger essential oil, peppermint oil, and black cumin oil, and if there's a fourth, probably fennel oil. Fennel oil is very good too. Lemon oil is good too, or citrus oil. So let me give you five, okay? <laughs> Sorry, I got a lot. Ginger, peppermint, black cumin, fennel, and then citrus oils that come from the citrus peel. Those. Those are probably the most beneficial for our overall gut and digestive health. And so you can diffuse those. Now I'll put a, just one drop of like ginger, peppermint, black cumin. I'll put one drop each in water and drink that sometimes with a meal or after a meal to support digestion. It's not always more is better. You typically just need one drop or so. But again, it goes a long way at supporting your digestive health there as well. And by the way, if you guys are watching this and you're saying to yourself, man, I want this Everything I talk, a lot of what I talked about here, if I want this in a 30 day plan, well, that's what I did here. And again, I, I, I'm just sharing this with you. I don't want it to be self promotion, but because I know it will help you, I'm telling you right now. I put all this stuff in my new book. It's Keto Diet here, and it comes with 80 plus recipes. By the way, the recipes are delicious. I have keto pancakes, keto brownies, keto chocolate chip cookies, keto blueberry muffins. This is how to do the keto diet the right way, keep your hormones balanced, improve your gut health, reduce inflammation, and it comes with a 30-day plan right here. You can see here, 
And for this week, Barnes & Noble for one week is doing it 20% off in every bookstore. So go to Barnes & Noble, get it. 20% off. Amazon has a sale right now too. And by the way, once you buy it and look through it or start reading it, hey, leave a review on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I want other people to know what you think about it, what you thought about the book. So thanks everybody for leaving a review for the book here and for checking it out. And hey, if you're, if let's say for instance, you're saying to yourself, hey, my health is perfect. If your health is already great, hey, buy this for someone you love. Maybe you some, like I have a keto cancer plan in here. Maybe you know someone with cancer. Buy them and give them the book as a gift. You know, maybe you've got a family member, a loved one, or a friend you know needs this, needs this. Hey, buy it for them and give it to them as a gift. It's a great thing to do. And again, start implementing this stuff. I guarantee when you start implementing these things, you're going to notice a difference in your overall digestive health. I want to say thanks, everybody, for sharing, being on a mission with me, all the love here. I'm going to continue to come on. Actually, I'm excited here. Uh, my next video on Facebook Live is going to be how to reduce inflammation. I'm going to connect all the different conditions that are anti-inflammatory. Um, and I'm going to uncover things that you probably didn't know were, can reduce inflammation or herbs you may not have heard of. In fact, I'm going to talk about an, an ancient herb used in Thailand today called galangal. And it's actually a crossbreed between turmeric and ginger but has all these anti-cancer anti properties, anti-inflammatory properties. I'll talk about things like chaga. It's a unique type of medicinal mushroom that boosts energy, but also acts as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. I'll talk about that, but I'm excited. So make sure you guys are staying tuned here, subscribe here for Facebook Live um, as well, and I'll be sharing all that. So guys, thanks so much for watching this Facebook Live. Make sure, again, check out the book here. I'll be back here in a couple days with another Facebook Live.